Hello, my name is Jason Mikkel Hunter. I'm going to be talking about how we've been using the latest version of the Carfat model as implemented in JAX um, in our initial first steps to fitting the Carfat to individual personalized hearing loss. The Carfat model is a cascaded filter model of the cochlea with the filters shown here in red. The highest frequency filter is H1 that also receives the input X and the lowest frequency filter is HN. The output of each of the filters um, are shown as Y and these represent the basilar membrane motion at that particular point along the cochlea. Each filter acts as an asymmetric resonator, here shown in the S-plane on the left and as a bow plot on the right, with different degrees of damping uh, with increasing zeta. The damping is mediated by the nonlinear gain from the outer hair cells um, stage that is actually integrated closely to the um, filters. This is um, directly controlled by the automatic gain control that represents the efferent fibers to the outer hair cells in the biological context. The, this automatic gain control is driven by the inner hair cells that respond to the basilar membrane motion at that particular um, stage or channel. And these also provide the final neuroactivity pattern in each channel, which represents the mean firing rate. Version 2 of the CARFAC has been recently published, and it differs from version 1 in several ways, but especially in the henna hairstyle stages that are represented as circuits for the version 1 on the left and version 2 on the right here. Uh, the first difference that one can note is the lack of a high-pass filter that helped to remove the DC um, BM response in the version 1. This has been folded back into the cascade of resonators in version 2. Secondly, V1, where V1 used the default one capacitor state model here shown as an automatic gain control, V2 uses a two capacitor state model. This allowed for a wider um, receptor potential to be ext um, extractable from version two. Therefore, when you present a three kilohertz um, tone, 10 milliseconds long at 60 dB SBL, um, you can see that the basilar membrane responses are the same at the, for the top trace. However, you are now able to get an extra stage, which is the voltage of the receptor potential, um, which is here amplified. And this leads to slightly different naps for both V1 and V2. Um, V2 shown is a solid line and V1 is a dotted line. Where V2 shows an onset, it's slightly less prominent. And it also shows a much smaller AC component relative um, to DC component. And this is indicative of the reduced synchrony that V2 shows at higher frequencies. When the basilar membrane output of the CARFAC has been tested against experimental data, as well as other models, it's been shown to be both fast and successful on almost all tasks by Sir Ray Metal in 2016. Had version 2 been used um, where the high-pass filter was rolled back into the cascade of resonators, then this would have likely led to being successful at all tasks, given that no anomalous DC energy would be entering into the basilar membrane response. Um, so if the cuff act is quite so speedy, why would one want to implement it in JAX? Well, to do to understand why, we need to understand a little bit about JAX. JAX is a machine learning framework for transforming numerical functions in Python, a la NumPy, but it differs in a few different ways. Firstly, it features built-in just-in-time compilation via OpenXLA, which leads to very speedy and efficient computation after compilation. It also um, shows automatic compilation to optimize execution of code on TPUs, GPUs, and CPUs. And by being based on Autograd, um, it's able to automatically calculate gradients for functions. All of these combined mean that it's uh, very suitable for running ML frameworks as it can actually run on a stochastic gradient descent based system. Demonstrate the speed of CARFAC when running JAX on a CPU. We show here benchmarks for five different systems for audio, which has been presented um, to JAX. Uh, CARFAC in JAX run at three different sampling frequencies. At 22.05 kilohertz, we can see that um, CARFAC in JAX processes audio around 20 to 50 times real time. Um, this linearly scales to 10 to 20 times real time for 48 kilohertz, and again linearly scales to 50 to 10, 5 to 10 times real time for 100 kilohertz. 
Although much slower when performing differentiation, it's still impressively fast with three to five differentiations performed per second for 22.05 kilohertz. And this again linearly scales to 1.4 to two differentiations per second at 48 kilohertz. At 100 kilohertz, we see near real time performance between 0.7 to 1.1 differentiations per second. But how do we go about fitting the car factor individual hearing losses? Since it's almost impossible to compare the NAP to equivalent biological data, we instead connect it to an observable behavioral measure, um, in our case, the clinical measure of the autogram thresholds, by using this particular framework to calculate thresholds for the CARFAC NAP in, um, at different frequencies. Uh, using the neurometric D-prime to calculate um, or compare the difference between the car fat output to a particular tone frequency at a particular tone target tone and silence. Um, and as you can see, we also incorporated two other features into the framework, a middle ear filter um, prior to the car fat and an internal noise model after the car fat, the latter of which helps us convert the car fat nap output into high spontaneous rate like um, activity. And we use um, the Saxit Abbas data from 1974 as the basis for um, our high spot rate fibers. We calculate the thresholds at 11 for 11 pure tone stimuli, the typical PTA um, frequencies. The plume is calculated in on CF fashion, where CF is calculated as 1.06 times pole frequencies. And threshold for perception is um, a, considered to be a D prime of greater or equal to one, where any loss um, can also be returned back as a training signal to the CARFAC parameters to help tune the CARFAC, or in fact, the middle ear or the internal noise model, given that they are also coded in, in jacks. So if we look at the uh, internal noise model specifically, we can see here the average steady state nap in response to one kilohertz tone at different stimulus intensities. And we convert this into equivalent activity from a high spot rate fiber by using a sigmoidal transfer function where the C parameter allows us to scale this normalized response back to those uh, firing rates that we desire. We implement these high spot rate fibers and present um, to the framework tones at the thresholds for the typical hearing individual, um, where dBHL equals zero, we get D primes that are much larger than one. And therefore, to get to the desired D pro profile of one, we require compensation at each stimulus that leads to a middle ear like compensation with the band pass function. Indeed, we can fit this with a third order high pass, uh, first order low pass cascaded filter. And this will lead to a D prime profile, which uh, is very close to one with only one to two dB deviation required to get the threshold similar to the average typical hearing individual. We can now shift the emphasis of this framework towards fitting the car fat to individual hearing losses, in particular by performing gradient scent relative to the ATAS hair cell health parameter. First of all, we set out a hair cell health to zero in all channels to find the maximum hearing loss possible. And this is shown in blue in this audiogram, and it ranges from 23 dBHL, the lowest frequencies, to about 55 dBHL, the highest frequencies. That should be sufficient to cover the two example nano audiograms above. And if we do perform gradient descent um, over about 300 epochs, which lasts about four to five minutes, we receive two outer hair cell health profiles um, for the example nano audiograms on the left. Um, and this is by only testing for the D primes, looking for the thresholds within the actual gray rectangle here, um, eight frequencies there within that rectangle. Um, and despite only testing at these specific frequencies, only finding the thresholds for those frequencies, we're able to get smooth at our or health profiles due to an L1 regularizer that we use. In summary, we've shown that we can use CARFAC uh, when implemented in JAKS to um, simulate individual hearing losses um, by only impacting the gain within the CARFAC model itself. In the future, we plan to look at combining this with uh, conductive hearing losses by um, affecting the middle ear transfer function. 
um, as well as looking at potentially sensorineural hearing loss, either by loss of high spot fibers um, or retaining these and losing low spot rate fibers, which potentially could lead to simulation of hidden hearing loss. I'd like to thank um, all my colleagues from Macquarie University, NAL, and Google, who have been of great help and support to myself and direct you to the talks of Mariam Hosseini and Nima Salimi who will be talking about electrical um, hearing side and the acoustical hearing side respectively. Thank you very much.